What's up guys? So today we're going to look at how to calculate <laughs> rental income on a property that you're looking to buy. Stick around to the end where I'll take you through my personal rental income spreadsheet that I use to calculate profits on houses in my own portfolio. So I'm going to take you through that. Stick around guys. I've been asked a lot by many of you out there on what the best way is for how to calculate rental income on a buy to let property. So by the end of this video, you're going to know how to measure profitability from rental property income and all the numbers that go into this because it's important guys that you know how to estimate your potential return on an investment on a property as accurately as possible before you buy and also during the course of that property while you own it. So let's not waste any time. I know you've all got figures to do today and you're here for the info. So let's just get straight into this. So if you're purchasing a buy to let flat, the ongoing monthly operating costs, i.e. the costs that you're going to have to pay day to day, month to month to operate the property. These are going to be firstly the agent management costs. Now there are several options that you can choose when it comes to the service that agents can offer you. They can simply just find find a tenant for you and you do all the day-to-day -day management and monthly payment collections etc on the property yourself they just find the tenant for you or they can go out and find the tenant for you and also handle the monthly payment collections on the property but you still do the day-to-day -day management for yourself so like responding to boiler breakdowns or fixtures and fittings or repairs you do that part or they can provide you with a fully managed service where they find the tenant they handle the monthly payment collections and also they manage the tenant day-to-day -day for you so they do all of that and you essentially do nothing next you're going to need the cost of the mortgage payments on your property there's a great app that i use for this it's called mortgage calculator uk mortgage calculator uk which i use to estimate monthly payments on a potential property purchase it's very clever because it does all the calculations for you all you put in is the mortgage amount and the interest rate that you think you're going to be charged on the property and it will give you the monthly cost so for example if i'm looking to buy a 100k house on a 75 percent mortgage i am looking for a loan of 75k i'll plug these figures into the amount section of the app I'll be paying over a 25 year term, so I'll leave that as it is, and I'll select interest only. Now, I did a whole video on why the majority of buy to let investors choose interest only, guys. So if you want to know more on why this is a good idea and how it helps you build wealth over the long term, watch that video, guys. It will make it very clear, and I'll put a link in the description below. And then lastly, I'll input the interest rate. In this example, I put in 4% because that's roughly the rate that I pay on my properties. It's above or below this in some cases, and it'll calculate your monthly payments. Now you can play with the interest rate and also the loan amount to see how the payment changes, but it's a very good app, guys. Recommend it highly. You're gonna to wanna to get the cost of the service charge and ground rent, guys. The service charge covers the costs of maintenance to the communal and exterior parts of the property. Really applies to flats mainly, guys, but that's gonna be the costs of things like landscaping in the garden or vacuuming the communal hallways or repairs to the roof, etc., guys. And then the ground rent is the cost of renting the property from the freeholder, guys. So when you buy a flat nine times out of 10, you're buying the leasehold and there's still a freeholder who owns the actual land that the flat is built on. So you pay him a ground rent each month and you can get both of these figures from the agent selling the flat guys next is you need to factor in for repairs things like pipes appliances furniture and god forbid your boiler that has not happened to me yet but i know it's inevitable i am inevitable but god forbid it happens anytime soon but for me five percent of gross rent per annum tends to cover uh, the amount that I spend on these types of expenses month to month or sorry, year to year. And then lastly is the insurance guys. If you purchased a flat, this tends to be covered under the service charge that you pay annually. But check with the management company guys. You can get the management company's name from the person selling or the selling agent um, and literally just give them a ring and ask. If it's not covered in the service charge, insurance tends to be around about 150 pounds per year, guys. So that's the ongoing monthly operating cost that you're gonna need to plug into your costs. Also, what you wanna get is the monthly achievable 
rent, okay? This is the monthly achievable rent that the flat or house can obtain on the open market. You wanna ask the selling agent for this. They should be able to advise on this and give you a figure that is likely to achieve on the open market and use that figure for these calculations, guys. Now guys, you're also gonna need the purchase costs. I did a whole video on this also, guys, so go check out that one. The link's in the description below where I explain what they're for and the average cost for each. But to recap very quickly on these, the purchase costs that you're gonna to need to factor into your profit calculations are the deposit, stamp duty, valuation report or survey, broker and lender fees, legal fees, advertising costs if you're advertising yourself, and refurb costs if you're doing any refurb work on the property. Okay, so now that you've got all these figures, let's seamlessly cross fade from my living room into my spreadsheet and we'll go through. So in this spreadsheet, we're going to calculate three key profit ratios, which you may have heard of before. The first is gross rental yield right here, which is a rental income divided by the purchase price, which we're going to input here. The second is net rental yield, which is your annual rental income minus all of your operating costs divided by the purchase price, once again here. And then lastly, I'm gonna show you how to calculate ROI or return on investment on a property, which is the annual rental income minus all of your operating costs, except for mortgage payments, but this time divided by the purchase costs, which we're gonna see in this section right here. In fact, I'm gonna make this slightly smaller so you can see everything. There you go. So the purchase costs, and it's going to calculate a total here. Now you can see that I spread out the costs in the income monthly from one to 12 across the top here to represent the months of the year from January to December. And the operating costs are all in these rows here from six down to 12. So all in this section here. And then the ratios are gonna get automatically calculated in this column here, Q, once we've inputted all the numbers. So in this specific example, what I'm going to do is input a few numbers. So. I'm gonna assume a rental income of 750 pounds a month. I'm gonna assume that monthly interest only mortgage payments are 270 pounds a month. And as you can see, it's auto calculating some of the figures as we go along. So the agent management charge, which I mentioned earlier on in the video, being between nine and 10%, I think I've selected, yeah, 9.6%. So as I said, earlier on in the video, the agent management charge is a percentage of gross rent. So 72 is 9.6% of gross rent of 750 pounds a month. And then repairs are 5% of gross rent. So that works out to 38 pounds per month. Okay, moving on. Let's say service charge is 1,200 pounds per year. So that works out to 100 pounds a month. Okay, moving on. Let's say service charge is £1,200 per annum. So that works out to £100 per month. And let's say ground rent is £240 per annum. So that works out to £20 per month. And then lastly, let's assume that the insurance is covered by the service charge. So that's going to be zero. Now, as you can see, the spreadsheet is set up to total these amounts at the end in column N. And I've set it up to total up the operating costs right here, which just makes things a bit easier. Purchase costs, let's say that you're buying a house for 100,000 pounds, okay? And if you look here, the way that this spreadsheet is set up, it will automatically calculate some of these values for you. So if you're buying a house for 100,000 pounds, typically the deposit is 25%. So it automatically calculates this to be 25% of the purchase price. Stamp duty is 3%. Let's say that there's a valuation cost of 400 pounds. Let's say that there are broker fees of 295 pounds. Let's say that legal fees are 1,450 pounds. Let's say buildings insurance is 150 pounds and no advertising costs because we're gonna use an agent and no refurb costs because we're buying a new build flat. So now let's look at these profitability ratios, which is why we've inputted all of these numbers in the first place. So the gross rental yield is very straightforward. It's the total rental income for the year, which is 9,000 pounds over the purchase price, which is 100,000 pounds. And that comes out at 9%. The net rental yield is slightly less and it's a bit more of a realistic ratio. The net rental yield is equal to the annual gross rental income minus the total operating costs for the year of £2,754 divided by the purchase price. 
So as you can see, this ratio is slightly less than the gross rental yield because it takes into account the operating costs, which are real costs that you pay. And that's a key difference between the gross rental yield and the net rental yield ratios, guys. And then we have my favored profitability ratio, which is return on investment or ROI. And this is the most realistic profitability ratio for me, guys. It's equal to the rental income minus the interest that you pay on your mortgage minus the operating costs divided by your total purchase costs. So this is the one ratio that factors in all the money that you actually pay to invest in a property. And that's what I use whenever I'm assessing my property investment purchases. If you'd like a copy of this spreadsheet, it's very handy guys. And I've set it up to calculate a lot of the ratios for you automatically. Just let me know and I'll be happy to send it to you. That's my um, rental income spreadsheet, guys. When I'm thinking about a potential property, I use this every time. I'll plug the numbers into this before I even go and see it, right? To see if it's worth my time visiting and worth pursuing through to a sale, sorry, a purchase. So if you'd like a copy of this, drop me a comment in the section below and I'll be happy to share it with you guys. If you have any questions on it, also let me know in the comment section below. I hope you found it useful. Please don't forget to subscribe and like guys and I hope to see you very soon. Cheers guys.